Oh, you're back for more? All right. Well, so am I. Let's continue. So, the last we left off, Xion has escaped and is now trying to, well, do some decent living. Unfortunately, she's under the watch of the son of Zaki family. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, she's trying to get a job. She's all caught up. She's trying to get to where she at least supports herself while at the same time. People are out to get her because she's not supposed to be around Okinomiya or Hinomizawa. Fucking the whole thing about twins. Yeah. Well, at least, just, at least she has some people on her side. It's a very quiet afternoon as always. Since I can't go outside as myself, I had to match schedules with me on when I go shopping. I've gotten used to it by now, so it's no longer a hassle. Because of this, I naturally have to buy things in bulk. Today, I shuttled between shops and home. I got this, I got that. Oh wait, isn't it a hundred yen on s Isn't it a hundred yen sale day today? I forgot this. Being in a good mood, I spun around with my arms spread out. I felt like a little whirlwind. Good. My arm hit a motorcycle parked on the sidewalk. It obviously wasn't there where it was supposed to be. Whoa, who parked this motorcycle here? I gave it a kick with no hesitation. There were three motorcycles lined up in a row. They all fell like dominoes. A beautiful sight. This is fun, though. Being in such a good mood made me leave my car down. I didn't realize that the owners of the motorcycles were right nearby and looked pretty scary. They grabbed me by the neck and dragged me to a dark alley. Then they called me all kinds of names. Everything was happening way too quickly for me to grasp what was going on. The fuck are you, bitch? What you think you're doing, huh? Fuck a bitch in your head, bitch. Gonna pay for what you did. Ah! Whoa, they can't really talk properly. I didn't have a clue what they were saying. Oh, I did. I had to translate their alien tongue into normal human words to even understand. We are very upset because you knelt down our motorcycles. You should immediately pay for the repair and compensation. Uh, possibly it. That's our offer. What do you say? We'd be happy to listen to your opinion. Something like that. Huh? Well, damn. Sorry, I don't think I continue interpreting. Huh? What you saying? I know what they're trying to say, but somebody has to warn them about the way they park their motorcycles. It wouldn't be fair to those who obey the rules if there were no punishment for those who disobey them. An accident, but it also must be God's will. But God, you could use me to punish these guys. How are you going to compensate me later? I heave a huge sigh. Of course, I wasn't afraid in this situation. Because it wasn't a dangerous one for me. Three guys yelling at the top of their lungs at a girl didn't look good doing it and they had too many disadvantages. First, there was the differences in gender and number of people. Even if I did something wrong, as men shouting at a woman didn't make them look like they were in the right. Adding to that, if there were three, that there were three of them. It already looks like it was going to get violent. Second the location. A, dark, a girl in a dark, narrow alleyway. Already a bad idea. On top of that, they're asking for money. No apology. Thanks to that, the public will be on my side. So this was a fight they couldn't possibly win. The only way for them to win would be to take my money before somebody finds out. Considering that, taking me this narrow, secluded alleyway might be a smart move since fewer people will find out about this situation. 
Uh, it must not. Now, I knew how slim their chances of winning were. From the very beginning, they had picked the wrong girl. I'm Mion Sanazaki now, and they'd be foolish to mug her in Okinomiya. Soon enough, the people of the Himizawa will notice and gather around. They don't spare mercy for their enemies no matter what. Bugs didn't know this area well, and if they did, they know how silly it was to rob Mion. Plus, the alleyway isn't always as empty as they assumed. The side street is a shortcut which locals frequently use to go home. Late afternoon, many people will be passing through here. A time had almost arrived. If I held it off a little longer, the street will soon be filled with people. Then the punks will have to go away. Didn't have to do anything, I just had to wait in order to win. A simple fight like that. While they could hurl abusive language at me or lift me up on my collar, they weren't actually going to resort to violence. Here is with the educational system for ingrating the lady's first mindset. But as a wicked person, I want to toy with them a bit, even though I could win just by waiting. I just wanted to paint them as even more villainous and drive them into a corner that would be even harder to talk their way out of. That demonic desire was rearing his horns. To put it plainly, I only needed to act as the poor, helpless victim a little further, like the pathetic, pitiful, tragic heroine everyone wants to sympathize with. In calls like this, I shouldn't start crying immediately because they get nervous and draw back. If it were a truly threatening situation, that would work, but I needed something different here. I pretend to be strong at first. In fact, I thought, why don't I challenge them? And eventually, I'd start trembling, my voice would fade, I'd get tears. It'd be even better if I play the role of a strong girl who's slowly giving in to fear. Me and I are probably the only ones who are capable of pulling that kind of stuff off. I'm probably better than her, though. Why don't you let me go now? I already apologized. I talked back with a little hesitation. Am I getting teary yet? Mm. Yeah. By the way, I heard men can't shed tears on command. I feel sorry for them. The three punks faltered a bit due to my sudden change in attitude, but they started, but they soon started yelling at me again. I had to keep going. That way they'll blatantly look like they're picking on a helpless girl. Please forgive me. <laughs> uh, what you doing? What's with this guy, huh? I... <laughs> Maybe you should just like that from the start. It looks like they were laying off a bit. Did I overdo it a little? It'd be boring if they let me go now. At that moment... Cut it out! Don't you see her crying? Stop it! A boy around my age appeared. He was skinny. Weak. Looked younger than he probably was. And he looked smart. Bravely glaring at punks. What the hell? Who the fuck are you? Back the fuck off! The punks turned away from me to face the boy instead. The boy looked a bit agitated when the punks started yelling at him. They sure were ruthless, but the boy must have known that from the beginning. He must have known that he was going in a dangerous situation. Yet he didn't hesitate. Fucking say something! Why don't you answer us? must have wanted to shout back at them, but he probably never used that kind of language in his life, so he couldn't have expressed his feelings out loud. Might have not even know what to say, just kept on glaring at them, let them know he wasn't going anywhere. Three punks, though, might have thought he was just lost for words and fear, but I knew different. The boy was overpowering them with nothing but will. The punks were losing, so they resorted to violence. They grabbed him and knocked him down, hit, kicked, tossed him around. Looked painful, but I knew. It was his victory. At the end, local passerby stopped the punks. They made no further fuss and just went away. The boy stood up. He was covered in dust. Ah, it's Satoshi! I knew it! He smiled when our eyes met and asked me if I was alright. 
He didn't look particularly okay himself, though. How could you step into a fight you obviously couldn't win? Pick your opponents better next time. I hesitated at first. <laughs> he laughed, saying he was watching from the beginning. That meant he had the option to walk away, but instead worked up the courage and stepped in. That was reckless, not brave. Mm, you're being a little harsh, Mion. You should at least say thank you. I saw you crying. I wasn't crying, that was just an act. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> hey, you don't believe me, don't you? Do you really think I'd cry? No, nobody believed me on Sanazaki would cry when punks bully her. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You really don't believe that was an act? I never cry. <laughs> I believe you, I do. I realized one thing. He must have been one of Sis's friends. He didn't seem to realize I'm her twin. He thought I was Mion, but with a different hairstyle. Mion and I had to live separately since we went to elementary school. Mion was in he. Mion was in Hinimazawi, I was in Okinomiya. I lived in a totally different environment from her. So it's not strange that people don't know me. Only very few people know I exist. I almost told her not Mion, but I managed to stop myself. Shion shouldn't be here. He's from Hinimizawa. Wouldn't it be good if he thought he saw a Mion lookalike in Okinomiya. So I had to act like Mion. Dealing with him could be a little bit more difficult than handling those punks. Well, I was just relieved because she seemed to have a girly side after all. You sounded hostile. What exactly do you mean by that? <laughs> I thought you kicked those guys' butts with some crazy martial arts, so I was really surprised when you started crying. Hey, like I said, I was acting. Weren't you listening at all? He just put his hand on top of my head and stroked it as if he stroked a kitten. I can remember somebody doing that to me when I was little, but it had been quite a while since somebody struck my head. I didn't know what to do. Why did it make me so embarrassed? My face ran all at once. I couldn't say anything. Hey, are you making fun of me? I stuttered in embarrassment. He looked calm, as if he was used to do this. <laughs> Whatever. Aren't you glad, though? What do you mean? Well, you didn't get hurt. He smiled while he kept stroking my head, and the smile looked divine. He wasn't going to stay for long. He'd already saved me from those guys, after all. Well, I need to be going, so I should head off now. Okay. I wanted to go through all the steps of meeting someone for the first time, but it didn't. As far as he was concerned, he just saved a friend from danger and wanted to leave quickly to avoid seeming pretentious. He and Leo must be friends who knew each other well, so I couldn't bring myself to ask what's your name. Mion's friend smiled once again, and his smile looked as refreshing as a clear blue sky. He smiled, though, a bit mischievously. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't tell anybody you were crying. <laughs> well, nobody would believe it if I told them anyway. Nobody would ever believe that our invincible class president cried. <laughs> he patted the dust off his butt once again. He walked back to the sunny main road away from the dark alley and turned around. See you in school tomorrow, I mean. Yeah, see you in school. He disappeared into the brightly lit street. I continued to sit in the gloomy alleyway. I could no longer see him. I was just staring absentmindedly at the bright light. That was the first time I met Sadoshi. I'm not even allowed to walk freely under the sun. I met a boy on a sunny day. How could a first, first girl like me fell in love with his innocence? Notebook, page 5. That must be Satoshi. He looks like what you described, and he has a habit of stroking people's heads. Uh-huh. His name is Satoshi, huh? The boy from earlier is called Satoshi Hojo. Mion said that he always was daydreaming. 
so she didn't believe that he saved me at first. His little sister is always kicking his butt. <laughs> uh huh. Has a little sister, huh? Yeah. Goes by Sadako. She's funny. And shrewd. But quick to cry when she's cornered. She's fun to watch. But things have been rough for her lately. So she's feeling a bit down. His sister came up naturally in the conversation. I try to soak up every scrap of information about Sadashi. Why? Why am I trying to ask so much about him? As I ask myself that, the feeling I got when he struck my head came back to me. I must have been blushing. Hello, Xion? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm here. I'm listening. To start, I heard Sadako's on bad terms with her aunt. Sadashi is mature, so he knows how to conduct himself. But when bad things happen, Sadako really lets herself go. What Sis told me was interesting. She told me parents of Sadashi and his little sister were dead. Sadashi and Sadako are now living with their uncle and aunt. Don't seem to, they don't seem like very respectable people. Always fighting and the uncle is cheating on the aunt. Mostly lives with his mistress. Sadashi and Sadako entered into that unwelcome environment. What surprises me the most is the fact that Sadashi's parents were the Hojo couple who were the leaders of the pro dam activist. That fact must have added something to the situation. I don't know what kind of stance the uncle and the aunt took during the damn conflict, but they must have taken some indirect blows. Sadashi's parents are dead after bothering them so much, and even left them their children. Their uncle and aunt obviously can't love those kids. Things have gotten worse in the past year, too. Women can be really nasty bullies. Sometimes it doesn't matter who they bully, even if it's a kid. On top of that, women tend to care less about propriety than men. As a result, Satoko seems exhausted with it all. I can imagine Satoshi bravely protecting his little sister. Just like when he saved me. So, she must be exhausted too, right? Huh? Must be covering for Satoko all the time. So, wouldn't you normally assume he's also feeling worn out? Hmm, well, I don't know. Had I said something wrong? Mion sounded a bit taken aback. So did that mean Mion can't tell how he's feeling? Because he's always wearing a blank look. So she never considered it. How could she be that insensitive even though she's all around she's around him all the time? I was amazed to realize that. Well, anyway, what does he usually do? He looked smart, so does he read a lot of books? <laughs> yeah, you're right. He loves to read. He's now reading, um, what's it called? Hmm. I continue to ask about him. About what he likes, dislikes, what he thinks about. I even assist all these questions. I just wanted to know more about him. The first time I ever been that interested in somebody. Didn't want to admit that I had feelings like that. Did I fall in love just because it's a stroke of the head? Am I stupid or what? But I remember the feeling of his hand on my heart. I hear it head. <laughs> I'm reading ahead. Shit. <laughs> uh, I don't think they heard that. Let's start over. When I remember the feeling of his hand on my head, my heart had felt tingly. I tried doing it myself, but it didn't feel the same. <laughs> I'm stupid. What am I doing stroking my own head? <laughs> Sis, I'm done for. I became stupid. What? Why are you laughing? And that weird voice of yours. <laughs> you wouldn't understand his feelings, sis. <laughs> when would I see him again? I felt as if my suffocating life had finally grown brighter. The life I've lived really was beginning to suffocate me. I couldn't go off really and I always had to make arrangements with me on before going to work. I thought my life would improve after escaping from the school but it wasn't that easy. It's not healthy to live like this for too long. Without any friends to hang out with I felt like I was hibernating. I started to feel the dangers of falling into boredom. 
All I could think of now was Sadr C. Hojo's face. I've only met him briefly, but in my encounter with him, it had a great impact on my new life. I feel like something exciting was going to happen. Really, I was hopped, I was hopped up like a little kid. The more I thought about it, I realized I've been thinking a lot about him a lot lately. This might be a crush. I feel a little ridiculous idolizing him in such a romantic way, though. Then, out of the blue, I got a chance to see him again. Oh? I saw a familiar face at twilight in the park, sitting on a swing. Looked like he was zoning out or maybe deep in thought. Didn't notice me even though I was right in front of him. I reminded myself to speak and act like Beyond before talking to him. Hey, what are you doing here? Beyond, you surprised me. You don't look surprised. I've been standing here for a couple of minutes now. Didn't you notice me? Have you? Sorry, I didn't. He smiled so derisively and shrugged. He looked depressed, like something was troubling him. Is something bugging you? You can talk to me if you want. Maybe I can help. No, that's okay. Come on, I owe you one from before, Satoshi. Or maybe you don't think this old man can be of any help. Don't you know how mighty I am? I'm okay. You don't have to help me. Huh. What is it then? Are you saying that you don't need help from a girl? Thinking him unfair, I puffed up my cheeks in a sulky gesture. Satoshi noticed and smiled. No, Mion. It's just I messed up my swing when I needed me most. I mentally rifled through all the information about Satoshi that Sis gave me. He doesn't look like much of an athlete, but apparently Satoshi belongs to a junior baseball team. They called him the... They call their enemy fires. I thought he's very skilled since I didn't hear much about, contribut about contributions to the team. Maybe that's why he doesn't tell many people he's a member. Given how talented he felt as a result of messing up, though, must be fairly dedicated. I deduced all that from what Sis told me and carefully chose my words so it does sound like her. What? Are you feeling down just because of that? Hey... It's not that easy to get over, Mion. I pat his back while chuckling. Satoshi would probably call me insensitive. I knew I should listen to him rather than trying to cheer him up. Acting like six was probably the wrong thing to do in this case, but I had no choice. This was just how she reacted in this situation. <laughs> and instead of feeling down, you just practice even harder and aim for your chance, you know? Practice makes perfect here. Well, if you want to be the opposing pitcher so badly you're willing to pull some tricks, I might be able to help you in a few ways. No point if I cheat. He hung his head after letting regrets out with a bad sigh. Surrender, defeat, resignation were all visible in this gesture. Are you quick to give up, or are you persistent? If you're a man, then don't you want to be a star and have your 15 minutes of fame? Sasha grinned and said yes. Of course, that'll be wonderful, but that's not why I play baseball. I just have fun batting and throwing the ball. You can understand that, right? So, man, this is sure. I only love games that I could win. I don't understand how you can love something when you can't beat the best at it. <laughs> that really sounds like you, Mion. I haven't realized I'm trying to make him feel better. He laughed all along. Didn't look depressed anymore. I guess he was just feeling down because of the game. He wasn't as depressed as I thought. Maybe I just jumped to conclusions when I saw him sitting alone in the park. You always put forth your best effort to win. That's admirable, I think. Yeah, it definitely is. He smiled gently and stood up, and then he started to stroke my head. All of a sudden... I totally wasn't prepared. It, well, uh, I thought this when he did this last time, but how can he stroke someone's head so easily? I feel like I turned into a little kid. Memories from kindergarten came to mind. My face must have been red. I'm embarrassed, but I'm also like, it's also like I was in heaven. So as she stroked me as though 
panic a cat again. I was blushing with my eyes closed. I felt helpless, like a girl being treated by the dentist with her mouth open and her eyes shut. Sanoshi didn't seem to notice my feelings at all. He didn't seem to care. I hate him. My eyes still closed. I waited for him to finish. He suddenly withdrew his hand. I need to get going. My aunt wants some stuff, so I have to go grocery shopping. Oh, okay. My voice faltered. I'm so embarrassed. Hmm? Uh, um. I'm going shopping, too. Hmm? What? You are? I thought they made still your household stuff. Shoot. I messed up. In the main Sonazaki house, the maids do everything. Therefore, Mion hardly goes grocery shopping. She even bragged to some people about that. Should have known better. It wouldn't be too hard to find an excuse. I just happened to be in town, so I thought I'd help out with the household stuff. Problem? Ha! <laughs> that doesn't sound like you. You always avoid doing boring stuff like that. You talk too much. <laughs> Stop stroking my head. <laughs> Sadashi seems to be having fun with how embarrassed I get when he pats me. I managed to talk my way out of it. I, he didn't seem to really care about the details. While walking with Sadashi in the shopping district of uh, Kami Ishiki, it suddenly occurred to me. Why had I messed up? I know Mion would never go grocery shopping. It was an amateurish mistake. Did I make that mistake when I was pretending to be her? No, I was probably speaking to Shion. I couldn't keep lying to myself. I had to just admit it. It was simply because I wanted to spend as much time with him as possible. It was easy to see why I was so attracted to him. I found something intriguing in my boring life and I didn't have to feel tense because he thought I was somebody else. Etc. Etc. Easygoing nature made him fun to be around. And his habit of petting people on the head was fun too. From these symptoms I could tell I was embracing the feeling of love. I was just casually enjoying the feeling. It wasn't that I fell in love with him. I was just having fun. I could simply spend fun time with him without having to think too much. Which one is broccoli? Green or yellow? That's cauliflower, Sadashi. Hey, could it be that you can't tell lettuce from cabbage? I'm not that bad. I'm doing my best here. Sadashi stared at the heaps of broccoli and cauliflower. After thinking for a while, he reached out for the wrong one. That's not it. Watching your shop is like being on a roller coaster. It's a lot of fun for me, though. Hmm. You got me. Sadako can't tell the difference either. Which is broccoli and which one's cauliflower? You guys are too funny. Sis told me Sadashi was a flaky big brother to the nagging little sister. I am mad, Sadako, but she must be having a tough time dealing with Sadashi. He stumbles over everything he buys, after all. That's cooking salt! It's mixed with pepper. It's different from regular salt. Oh, is it? I think I saw salt and pepper separate in a science experiment once. If I'm making excuses, it just put it back on the shelf. This is normal salt. What are you getting next? We're just fucking with this guy. Shit. <laughs> You're being a great help, Mion. You look smart, but you have some serious issues. I think you should study more. That's a little harsh. There. Is that it? And it goes. <laughs> That's not it. Don't just throw anything in the basket. Check the price and how many servings it has. My first impression of Sato C was that he was strong and reliable. But the more I spoke to him, the more surprised I was at how clumsy and unreliable he was. How do I put it? It was pretty hard to leave him alone. He was dangerous on his own. If he wasn't careful, he might start wondering, do you cross the street when the, right, when the light is red or was it green? And gets himself run over by a dump truck. Ooh. He 
Your toll is 1,780 yen. Have member's card? Huh? Oh, yeah, I do. Uh, where is it? Oh, sorry, we can't seem to find it, so we'll be alright for tonight. I finished checking out, ignoring Satoshi as he finished through the wall of flower seats. That was horrible, Mion. You made me waste points. Don't go slowly fishing through your wallet to look for your member's card in the middle of the evening shopping rush. There's a huge line behind us. Didn't you notice all the evil glares from the old ladies? Times like this, you should get it out before you reach the register. Oh, right. <laughs> Good to know. It's not only for when you go shopping. The same thing will go when you ride a bus. I bet you don't open your wallet and start looking for change until you're about to get off and have to pay while holding up everyone behind you. No, everyone walks by me and pays their own. Huh. You know what that means. You're being a super huge bother to everyone. You need to have the money out beforehand. Just good manners. You get it? Okay. You're scary today. <laughs> Satoshi smiled as if patronizing me. I couldn't believe it. It was definitely the type who made women want to protect him. Sure, he was fine as he was when he had a busybody like me around him, but I couldn't stop worrying whether he was able to function in society without someone like that nearby. We got plastic bags and sorted out what we bought. Sometimes she put a pack of tofu at the bottom of the bag and I slapped his hand and put it in the milk carton instead. There we go. Now your aunt won't freak out when she opens the shopping bag in her kitchen. Thanks. You help me a lot. I don't think I'm very good at shopping. Just shopping? That's definitely not the only thing. Right. <laughs> Just kidding. I realized a few things while I was spending time with him today. Not just bad at shopping, he's also chronically clumsy. In general, you can call him a slow thinker. That man, when he stepped into the quarrel with the punks, he must have needed a lot of courage. Might have been a simpleton, but not stupid. He's aware of the weaknesses, so he must have been aware of the danger of that situation. Could have chosen to walk away even though I was in trouble, but he chose to be a man to step in. That was really admirable. Good boy, you did a great job. There, there. What is it? Don't stroke my head. I'm rewarding you for shopping successfully today. There, there. You're making fun of me, aren't you, Mion? No, I'm not. Can you go home by yourself? You know how to get there? Mm. You are making fun of me. Sadashi's sulky face flushed red. He's just too cute. At that point, I caught a glimpse of a billboard from the corner of my eye. Piano lessons. Abacus class. Junior baseball team members wanted. It was a posting from the team Sadashi belonged to, showing the day, time, and place of their next practice. By then, I knew just how flaky he was. I figured he must be just the same when playing baseball. Sometimes he realized I was reading the post, he looked uncomfortable and walked away. I know what you're thinking. I hope you won't come to see me playing baseball, Eon. Am I right? Mm. Mm. What does that mumbling mean? I know I'm right. <sighs> Sashi was quiet. He mumbled something. Seemed like he couldn't say anything back since I had been right on the money. Sadashi, you're just too cute. I don't think going silent is a good way to dodge the issue. Well, that might have just been the way innocent people like him would react to a situation like this. See ya, Sadashi. It's getting dark, so be careful on your way back. Aren't you going home, Mion? The Inimizawa? I have to make a stop somewhere first. Don't worry about me. I'll help you this time. In return. <laughs> I'm okay. What are you going to help me with anyway? You should learn to support yourself before you try to help me. Mm -hmm. 
You're really mean today. He seemed to have some pride at least. He looked a bit upset because he was teased by a girl. But in contrast, I felt very satisfied. As a result, I forgot to keep my card up. Thank you for the help. That was sweet of you. Whoa. <sighs> While wearing a bright smile, he suddenly started stroking my head again. I know he's teasing me, but I can't reject him. Ugh. He keeps doing it only because I re he realized I won't resist. Damn it! See you, Mion. You should go home before it gets dark. See you in school tomorrow. Uh, yeah, see you in school tomorrow. In fact, I won't see him tomorrow at all. It felt awkward, but I had to settle that. I had to thank Sis for letting me use her name. After I separated from him, I found myself giddy and wishing to see him again as soon as possible. I wanted to know more about him. I couldn't wait for my next chance to see him. Actually, maybe there was something I could do. Just like when I obtained my freedom from St. Lucius, I can choose how to live my life. Whatever, it wasn't that complicated. I just wanted to tease him more. I wanted to stroke on my head more. And, well, whatever. I hope, <laughs> I hope it's not what I think it is. Yeah, I'm probably going too dark there. Dirty mind. I already knew the schedule for his baseball team. So what now? Grumble Diary. Hmm. This chapter fell short, so I might continue on with the next one. View the new ones. My aunt finally stopped her hysterical stream. Today was just like any other day. I can't remember what set her off. Whatever it was, she changed subject constantly anyway. It didn't matter. She went on past midnight again. The urge to sleep was pounding the back of my head. Once Sadako has been able to relax, she fell down on a spot and started sleeping, still clinging to my sleeve. I carried Sadako to the bedroom and laid out our futons. Here, Sadako, your futon is ready, so get in, okay? She crawled in like a worm, stopped moving once she was inside. I wish I could go to bed too, but I couldn't. My aunt asked me to do some chores. I had to get toothpaste after school. I had to write it down somewhere. I had to make rice for lunch tomorrow. Setting the timer. I also had to repile the towels in the bathroom. That was the reason for today's scolding. My aunt will get mad if everything isn't done the way she wants. Oh, and there's something else. I was working at the grocery store the next day. They wanted me to bring an apron. Did we even have one in this house? i never seen one. I won't be sleeping when I go to school, so I won't have time to ask her. What should I do? Since Mion me me helped me get that job, I don't want to screw it up. In that case, why don't I ask Mion about it at school? She might lend me that one. Was there anything else? I was envious of Sadako because she got to go to bed. Pathetic that I felt that way. Just in case. I always like to save after the chapters. Let's continue. Let's make this a little longer. Hey there, how are you guys doing in the heat? Oh, Meon, we're doing good. Is that our refreshment? Thanks a bunch. You're such a great manager. I just felt like coming here. I didn't bring this for you, by the way. Don't treat me as your manager without my permission, please. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so we have Dr. Yuri, the perverted lolicon doctor, and also Sadashi. Eee, we good? Hold on. We'd be stronger team if you were our manager, Mion. Why don't you apply as manager? Suddenly she smiled at me in a carefree manner. I didn't want to become their manager. It'd be tiresome. 
I've been coming every week, though, so I'm a quasi-manager already. Well, if I feel like it. Anyway, how's Sato she doing, Coach? Is his batting average improving? Yep, he's doing fine. His batting average is... Well, if you buy three packs of rice crackers, that's seven mart. <laughs> he has no fucking clue, and neither do I. I don't know much about batting stats. I just find a f running into a fucking wall funny. Does that mean he's 30%? Wow, you're doing great, Satoshi. Uh-huh, it's not just about the number, Mion. I have to be able to hit the ball where it really counts. It's good you're aware of your weaknesses, Satoshi. You're just continue working on them for now. Eerie signaled to the picture and threw the ball. Satoshi looked calm, following the ball with his eyes, and swung. Thwack! The ball flew between first and second bases and landed in the distance. Wow, that's great! Good job, Satoshi! I clapped and Satoshi blushed in response. He, he repositioned his helmet to hide his face. <laughs> Well, he's in good practice, and when the game is slow, he re-smiled compassionately. Seems sounded she really couldn't perform well when he counted. Well, he was usually good. When everybody expected him to perform, he couldn't. <laughs> Dirty Mind's Act Cup again? Ugh. I didn't think it was because of nervousness, just couldn't do it. I think it's a perfect fit for Satoshi's character. He seems calm at first, but he's actually slow. Numerically speaking, you're a great player, but you need to be able to hit the ball even when things get serious. That's why you were an easy out in the match with the Yukita Jaguars the other day. Uh, shut up, I know that. If he had been able to hit the ball then, he would have been a hero. A shame. A hit could have put the offense into the lead, or at least given, the, given him an extension. That was when Satoshi came up at bat. He wanted him to live up to everybody's expectations, but statistically that wasn't likely to happen. Here he insisted on getting him a chance in spite of the fact that all of the team members had adjusted a pinch hitter. <sighs> It wouldn't have been perfect if you could have hit it. Why didn't you? Why can't you hit the ball in a situation where it really matters? There was nothing I could do. I know I'm weak in a situation like that. I thought a pitch hitter was a better idea too. It's not like about the match, it's about you. Ugh, fucking... You need to be more aggressive. Shouldn't you have thought the opposite way? Should you insist that you be up by bat, no matter what everybody else said? I can't believe you wanted to give away the chance to some pitch hitter. Why are you so weak like that? That's what I'm always telling him. I know that's one of his good points too, but you can be a gentleman other times, but when playing games, you should be a demon. I think all the men should have those two sides to them. You need to let your demon out, Sadashi. You're a native to enemy zealous, so never forget, you have the demon's blood running through your veins. Let's not. Are you listening? Sounded she? I am. I'm not sure, but... What aren't you sure about? We're talking about you, so... Oh. <laughs> Sounded she suddenly stroked my head. It looked delighted for some reason. A blush immediately spread across my face. I didn't know how to respond. You're giving me advice, right? Thanks. <laughs> I'll do my best. Hey! Don't you try to fool me! I'm not. I'm just happy that you care about me. <laughs> I couldn't resist this, and I couldn't help mumbling like he does. As soon as he ran back to the field, leaving me red as a beat. Don't you feel good when you have your head stroke? 
Depends. If it were you, I had to teach you a new martial arts technique. <laughs> what a shame. <laughs> All right, everyone, gather around. Why don't you split into groups and have a practice match? The Himizawa Fires are a sort of lazy team. The members gather simply to enjoy playing baseball and not to fight for victory. The Okinomi Titans use this field too, but they practice on a different day of the week, always training hard with dumbbells and stuff. Our team splits into two and started a match, retaining their loose atmosphere. I'll keep track of the score. Coach, do you have a pencil? Thanks for helping me out. Here. I took a pencil on a clipboard. I didn't know how to differentiate between recording hits and errors at first, but by now I was used to it. Tell me what you got. Oh, maybe I'll be, it'll be too much pressure if I cheer you too excessively. Just do okay. <laughs> How does the foul sound very encouraging? <laughs> Do your best! Time passed slowly that Sunday. A huge, some huge white clouds appeared in the sky. It made me feel healthy. Humans are born to be active under the sun. One of the parents was acting as umpire, so Yuri sat on the bench with me. He shouted words of encouragement to the kids as they ran to their positions. Any other baseball coach would constantly berate them, but he was too generous, like a kindergarten teacher. Let the kids have fun while watching over them. To other baseball players, might look a little naive. I'm surprised you guys can do well with only a small amount, small amount of practice. Kids in Eden Mizano romp around every day, so the amount of exercise they get surpasses that of the city kids. Besides, too much training is not always effective. You think completely different from the Okinomiya Titans. I can understand why the coach hates you. It's not about being right. Matches exist for someone to win them, after all. Prioritizing victory certainly isn't wrong. But I think it's admirable to aim for victory together. The goal of the team doesn't have to be victory, that's all. The Hinimizawa Fighters and the Okinomiya Titans have been rivals for a long time. Both teams shared the same baseball field for one thing. And originally there was only one team. But the people living in Himazawa left and made their own. Anyhow. We were rivals. The Okinomiya Titans were strictly about winning. The Himizawa Fires were just about having fun. Surprisingly our scores weren't that weren't that so different. Which meant our team had something they didn't. Even though I couldn't put it into words, I knew that made what made it happen. Hey, Team 1, no slacking. You can make up the two-point difference pretty easy. Team 2, no slacking. Some parents would criticize our coach being too lenient, but still others would strongly agree with him. Which side would I take? The latter? Really couldn't say for sure. A reason for this was that Erie had an obnoxious habit of sexual harassment. I particularly had a fascination with maids, but I should talk about that some other time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's remember that Eerie had some fascination with lollies and fucking maids. Sato, she let the ball pass twice to see its trajectory and then hit it on the third pitch and ran to first base. Oh, he did it! He's so good when he's relaxed. In the beginning, he used to get tired very easily. He's improved quite a lot since then. He really does look like the kind of bookworm. I wonder why he started playing baseball in the first place. All the other kids joined the team love baseball. They go out and play in the fields outside of practice. That's why all that. That's why they all had an aptitude with it. But since never said Sadashi exercises intensely at school or anywhere else. He only likes to read. That's why I didn't understand why he started playing for this team to begin with. <laughs> 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 
That's because I invited him. Is that so? You recruited him. Did you notice some sort of hidden talent? Excuse me, can I have a cup of barley tea? Thanks. Yuri asked for a tea in a suspicious manner. While he constantly joked around, I knew he was active, actually a very mature person. I assume he was trying to evade my question. Is there a particular reason? He pretended he didn't hear me, but I pressed him on. In response, he shrugged and answered a question. I think you might be able to guess. What would be me on Sanazaki's guess? I quickly searched through the data I had on him. I came up with him being under certain family circumstances. He lost his parents in an accident a year ago. Since then, he's been having a tough time at his uncle's home. So you invited him so he could vent? Sports are great. You can free yourself through exercise. I thought that as long as he concentrated on something else, he could forget about his troubles at home. You know he's usually sort of a dreamer. A daydreamer, zoning out all the time. Is he still stressed? I knew Satoshi must be suffering even though he didn't look like it. But Milan never pays attention to things like that, and I have to act like she does. Sasha got really sick after his uncle took him into custody. He had many clinical symptoms, but the causes were unknown. Sasha often gets sick after he was taken into his uncle's custody. Suffer from fatigue, migraines, a lack of energy, sleeplessness. The coach, or Dr. Airy, soon realized... Satoshi was suffering from a psychological disorder. Most of the people in Himizawa knew how bad Satoshi's environment was. Natural for him to become sick because he entered such a bad environment right after his parents' deaths. Hojo cannot express himself freely. Whether he's crying or simply being agitated, he's not good at handling those emotions. True, I can't imagine him being mad or crying. You know Hojo's mother had been married a few times already? Hmm. A little bit about that. Satoshi's mother married a number of men over the years. That means Satoshi had several stepfathers. He had to deal with strangers coming to his home multiple times and he was forced to be mature. Satoshi is mentally underdeveloped. He isn't aware of it himself though. He didn't have enough time to cry, laugh, or throw tantrums in his childhood. He was forced to become a grown-up in such a short time. That doesn't sound right. Children have to behave like children in order to grow. There's nothing positive about being forced to become an adult. Not only was Satoshi's current relationship with her aunt conspicuously terrible, I heard that in her relationships with her previous stepfathers, they weren't good either. Sadako caused problems, and Satoshi always stepped in to protect her. I thought his physical symptoms came from distress. His body was trying to harm, warn him. That's why Yuri invited Sado Sadoshi onto the baseball team. He told Sadoshi that he needed a new member. Or something like that. He hesitated at first, but after I talked to him at the clinic a few times, he opened up to me. First I invited him to come see the practice. Then I suggested he try batting. I eased him into it. Sports worked excellently. Yeah. They worked excellently for Sadashi. His health quickly improved and started to become interested in baseball. He practiced batting and soon was able to swing beautifully and learn how to see the trajectory of a ball. Can't imagine that. He likes to read, so he must have read a book titled How to Play Baseball or something. He's become a good batter very quickly. Put forth a lot of effort. Though I wish you could actually hit it when it comes down to the wire. <laughs> Are you guys close? I think so. He talks to me about his problems, so I guess it's a sign of trust. I'm a bit jealous of how confidently Yuri said that. While Satoshi and I were friends, we weren't so close that we'd open up to each other like that. Oh, are you jealous? But about what? Taken aback, I blushed. 
He started to laugh at me. Please, stay as his good friend. Well, yeah, I'm trying. I didn't know what I was saying. You know, regarding Hojo, he seems a little sick again lately. What? The ball flew to the left, but the left fielder managed to catch. It seemed that the relationship between Sadako and Iran's gotten worse. So it was obvious his sickness had something to do with that. Their aunt is pulling Sadako in a terrible way. She was worn out after all that. So Sadoshi has also worn out from covering for her, isn't he? I wasn't interested in Sadako, so I switched such subject back to Sadoshi. I didn't know much about her. I knew she was a big part of Sadoshi's life, but I'd never been interested in her until today. Must have been building up self-esteem to take care of her unreliable brother. All I knew about her. Considering Sadoshi's personality, even that goofiness of his might have been an act. Maybe he was trying to make her feel good about herself, letting her take care of him. If only unconsciously. When he's alone, he's surprisingly strong. I realized that recently. I couldn't help but think. That his whole life is constantly affected by Sadako. Sadoshi managed to get along with his stepfathers even though he experienced some stress. He was even getting along with his aunt. But in order to protect Sadako, he always had to step in and suffer. I didn't really know anything about Sadako. But I had to admit I felt hostile towards her. I felt jealous because she was monopolizing him. Seems Iran has been tearing it too. Blech. I need a drink it. Ugh. Seems that Iran has been tar tyrannizing Sadako even more lately. Must have been what's causing Sadako's sickness. Eerie heaved a sign. As he said, Sadako has been absent a few times lately. A bit tired, too. Looked normal when around everyone else, but he looked depressed when he was alone. So you invite him to join the team to relieve his stress, huh? Mm -hmm. That's right. He looks stressed again now. How can we save him this time? <laughs> I don't know. He smiled powerlessly. I couldn't help but feeling a bit disappointed about that. Because how does she put trust in him? Just between you and me, Sadashi recently told me that he wanted to leave the team. Uh, how come? He claimed he was tired of it. That's what he said. But I believe he actually wants to spend more time with Sandika. He thinks Sandika might end up being tortured while he's at practice. I think he's concerned about that. I was left speechless for a while. Sadako again. Sadako. Why did Sadashi have to sacrifice so much for her? Just by ignoring her, the stress would melt away. Of course, I knew he couldn't do that. If that were the case, then the blame would lay with his little sister. I knew how badly she'd been treated, but that only happened because she made things worse for herself. It was her fault that she couldn't establish a decent relationship with her aunt. If Sadako were more mature like Sadashi, her home life would have gotten, wouldn't have gotten so bad. Sanushi wouldn't have to suffer those indirect blows. In the meantime, the baseball team's practice match had become one-sided. It wasn't even worth watching. The membership of the losing team was just goofing off. The sky turned cloudy. It was rather depressing. It didn't look like it rained. The gray sky hadn't brought any cool air. It just felt disgusting. Eri was quiet. He was looking down around his feet. I, meanwhile, just stared at Sadashi. To me, he didn't act, look active anymore. He was once able to enjoy playing baseball, and he felt fine. But he got sick again, just because the relationship between Sadako and Iran had deteriorated. I couldn't help but say it. Should we do something about Sadako instead? It was just a marvel, but he definitely caught it. What? 
What do you mean? It's not that complicated. If Sadako were stronger, Sadako wouldn't have to deal with the stress. I think Sadako might be the cause of everything. I don't know about that. Yeah, you do. If she didn't cause any trouble, he wouldn't have to step in, wouldn't he? He wouldn't have taken over in the fight between Sadako and her aunt, right? He never got scared of any trouble. No matter how formidable the enemy, he'd bravely stand up to protect the weak. I knew that. I could vividly imagine it. Whenever their aunt chides Sadako, Sadoshi's stepping in, protecting her. The aunt probably didn't like it. Though Sadoshi didn't have to fight, the aunt would attack him anyway. The fight would then be between the aunt and him. Sadako might then tease the aunt by sticking out her tongue, hiding behind his back, pretending to be scared. She never think about how deeply he was being hurt. Because of Sadako, Sadashi become cornered in stress. I was surprised to hear this from you. I thought you were Sadako's friend, her classmate. A big sister kind of figure. I thought you would always be on her side. But what you said is a surprise to me. He looked at me suspiciously. I could tell what he was thinking about me. I said too much. Mion, Sonazaki, and Sadako are friends. They're close, so Mion should have been encouraging her after the situation at home got tougher. That's what Mion's supposed to do. I totally forgot about that and spoke as myself. Only natural Yuri would give me a suspicious look. He might end up changing the expression of Mion, Sonazaki entirely. I have to apologize to her about this and ask her to put things right. I totally messed up. Even so, I didn't think I said anything wrong. I objectively looked at the situation and made a modest proposal. To be honest, I was simply afraid he might leave the team. Couldn't go into school in Iimizawa, so baseball field was the only place I could see him. I couldn't even say that he was my reason for living. Well, that's right. I'm in love with him. But I wasn't going to tell him how I felt, for I was satisfied just being by his side. I certainly couldn't ask for anything more. After all, I couldn't reveal my true identity. I had to pretend to be Mion in order to live in Okidomia. I thought that maybe I should leave in order to be free. But that's stupid. No matter how tough my life might be, I'd prefer to be here, with Sadashi stroking my head every now and then. Why did I love him that much? I read about it in some manga once. You don't need a reason to be in love. I was surprised at myself for being like this. Calm down, Xion. I breathed out slowly and held my breath, trying to slow my throbbing heart. I felt a bit calmer. At that point, a clear thought came to my head. I wanted to be with Sadashi. So, I wanted to stay on the team. So, I want to get rid of his concerns about the stress. So what? So, what can I do to achieve all that? My head started to cool down as I heard the umpire shout, Game set! And match! Some days I see him, some days I don't. The clear sky gets cloudy and rain will always stop eventually. I thought his absence was just like that, but he was actually on the verge of a breakdown. Notebook, page 19. The rainy season was just around the corner, and the air had became so humid that my shirt stuck to my skin. It had been a few weeks since Satoshi stopped showing up for baseball practice. I looked for him as soon as I arrived at the field. He's not even here yet. Did I get here too early? I want to see him play in the field right when I get here. I had started arriving late because of those feelings. But he wasn't here today either. I didn't even bother hiding my disappointment anymore. Everybody knew by now how I felt. The team members from Mion's class came over to try and console me, but I shoo them away. 
What's going on, Sonzaki? Feeling sick? You and Eerie couldn't come for me. I was, in a, I was aware that he too knew why I was like this. I'm going home. I don't feel like watching the practice today. Look, we're having a meeting with the Okinomi Titans later. I wanted you to be there because you're our manager. Don't treat me like a manager. I never agreed to be one. He looked down, not knowing what to say. Alright, help us again when you feel like it. Maybe I won't come be... I didn't even look like it. Ugh. Don't even look English. Okay, I know what to say. Maybe I won't be coming back. If you really need a manager, look for somebody else. Please do come again. Whenever you feel like it. Sadashi will be sad if you're not here when he does. I ignored him and turned around. I had already set up my schedule with Mion, so I didn't have to ask her every time anymore. I tried to contact her a couple of times to ask how Sadashi was doing at school, but I hadn't been able to get through. Apparently the hag had sense I might be in contact. In other words, Sis was being watched. As a result, it has been easy to contact her. Kasai has been helping me contact her. Seemed to also have been marked. People knew he was loyal to me. I haven't seen him for a while either. All I could do was wonder how sad she was doing. I was frustrated because there was no way for me to know. My head was filled with worries, but something surprised me out of the blue. Somebody called out to me when I was about to leave the field. It's Rena. Michan, hello. I have never seen this girl before, but luckily she called me Michan. There's only one person who refers to me on that way, as far as I know. Rena, I'm surprised to see you here. Rena Ryugu, or Rena Ryugu. Well, her real name is Rena, but she wants to be called Rena. That's why I will call her. She moved here in April. I have some information on her, but it was all ambiguous. Sis was still a bit uncertain about her, since she's so new. It's hard for me to handle someone like that. I didn't know how to act around her as Mion. So I decided to pretend to be in an obviously skulky, sulky mood. That way she wouldn't talk to me as much, assuring, assuming Mion was simply feeling bad. And, well, that's how I really am, anyway. Are you going home? Yeah, I'm not feeling well. Sorry. Let's go to the other, then. I wanted to say that I'd rather be alone, but there's only one road in Iimizawa. So asking to be alone would look odd. The only way to not seem suspicious would be to walk home with her. Yeah, let's go. Rena quietly nodded, and I unlocked my bike. Mijan, do you have an umbrella? Nope. It might rain soon. So let's hurry a bit, since you don't have one. As she predicted, we were attacked by pouring rain on our way. We ended up taking shelter in a small shack in front of a bus stop. It's pouring, but it doesn't like something to last long since the sky over there is clear. I heard the sound of rain pattering on the rooftop and the raindrops jumping on the puddles. It sounded loud, but it made me feel strangely calm. I zoned out for a moment. Then Rena talked to me while looking up at the rainy sky. I was worried about you because you looked so down. All the baseball team members knew I was depressed because I hadn't seen Sadashi recently. Most of them attended school in Hinimizawa, so it wasn't surprising that she knew as well. I haven't been able to contact Sis the past few weeks, but I was sure she had an idea of how I feel about Sadashi and how I would feel if he didn't come to baseball practice. Sis was probably pretending to act a little depressed during her day and he was out to avoid creating a big gap between moods. But neither of us knew the details about the other. So she wouldn't be able to answer if others asked her what was wrong. She'd only be able to say, leave me alone. That might lead more people to be worried. Renna must have thought Mion was depressed. That must be why she came all the way to see me. She must have known what was going on because she knew I was at that baseball field. You feel lonely because Sadashi is avoiding us? Having to do with what's been going on with Sadashi from what she just said, 
He'd been distancing himself from others lately because of exhaustion. That's what it sounded like, at least. He looked like he was very worried about Satoko. I think he's really on edge. I feel bad for him. He really cares about his sister. A lot of courage. What I said sounded hollow, as I knew too well how much of a bird Sadako had become. But I think you would feel even worse if you also look depressed, I think. I don't want that. I know, but if you really don't, then you need to smile for him, otherwise he might feel really cornered. I know you're strong. You can smile, even if it's just pretend. I want you to smile no matter what. You know that lies can't become true sometimes. Yeah, and that comes a horror story. What she was saying in a nutshell was both Satoshi and Sonico are totally wiped out. If Mia was also depressed, even though she's the sort of person that usually lightens the mood, this situation will be stuck in a vicious cycle. Reddit sounded more like she was trying to give me advice than trying to console me. Must be more mature than she looks. Sis told me she was a funny girl with a few bad habits, but she seemed to have another mature side to her. Do you love Satoshi? Yeah. Though I shouldn't have told her that. I immediately responded. In that case, why don't you smile? Rena smiled herself. I believe he will feel better. If he sees you smile, I know you feel powerless now, but your smile will give him strength. I know what you're saying, but it's not that easy. Renan giggled and nodded. You'll come back after he's done with his part-time job. Part-time job? I almost asked that question, but I managed to stop myself. But the tone of Renan's voice sounded like it was something everyone knew. It's part-time job, huh? I wonder when it'll end. Until he has some money, I guess. We'll finish by Sadako's birthday, at least. I tried to figure out what was going on from what she said. I had to listen very carefully to uncover the whole picture. Sadako seems to be working in order to make some money. I don't think it's easy to find a job when you're still in school. So this might have to have something to do with it. This job only seems temporary. And it seems to have something to do with Sadako's birthday. Wasn't that difficult to figure out? Sadako's so was working and saying out to buying his little sister something expensive for her birthday. Trying to comfort her. Even though he was so torn up himself. Sadako again. Sadako's already worn out because of her and now working for her sake even though he's exhausted. How stupid. It'd be easier for him to just forget about her. Tisk, tisk. Oh god! <laughs> Shit! I was hoping I wasn't going to see this shit again. Now I have flashbacks. Oh yeah, and what about you? Aren't you lying and keeping secrets from all of us? Aren't you? <sighs> Aren't you lying and keeping secrets from us? This is fucking creeping me out now. I, I was startled when I realized Rena was looking straight in my eyes. Blankly. She was smiling, but their eyes are creepy. <laughs> no shit. I never voiced what I was thinking, but she was looking at me as though she figured out I was blaming Sadako. She then beamed when she noticed my fear. She smiled as though she understood I thought that way because of love. She was giving me the creeps. I could hear thunder roaring in the distance. The rain began to pick up. Do you feel jealous of Sadako because she monopolized Satoshi? I avoided answering immediately. Well, Rena seems to know what I was thinking already. I wouldn't be upset even if you did. That's just how it is when you're in love. Thanks? You've been encouraging Sadako despite that. That's admirable. Of course I have. She's my friend. I sounded so fake. I felt like spitting on the floor. All we could do was discourage Sadako and Santoshi. I don't know how to save him from this situation. 
She's relying on Sadoshi a little bit too much. If she was stronger, he wouldn't have to suffer in her place. <laughs> you sounded really straightforward. Renna nodded with an unflinching smile, even though my remarks could be taken as a little bit harsh. What was this mysterious girl thinking? It's difficult to get a read on her. Maybe sort of she felt that way a little too. Renna kept smiling, but her smiles looked strangely cold. I think he's tired of protecting Sadako, and he's aware of that. Given the type of person Renna is, I don't think she'd say something if she wasn't certain of it. Because of that, she must have been confident in what she just told me. What makes you think that? He said so. What? Sadashi secretly confessed to her. Renna asked me to keep it that way. Sadashi told me. He felt tired of protecting Sadako. He's feeling guilty, though. I don't think he would say something like that. But, on the other hand, it wasn't likely that Renna was lying. I just met her. So I don't know what made me feel that way. But my hunch told me she was telling the truth. I heaved a huge sigh. Sadashi must have gotten so tired that he couldn't help telling someone. Even so, even if he'd thought of it that way, he wouldn't tell someone so easily. Maybe when I let him to do so, she might have been capable of something like that. Oh, yes. I don't understand. This girl. It'd only been a little while since we met, but I already started talking about something that I kept deep inside me. She has some kind of supernatural power to reach into people's minds and drag out what they're thinking? It suddenly hit me. I was sitting with this creepy girl in a tiny shack. I've been dragged into her strange little world. I don't think since I realized Renna's real personality. She thinks Renna is just a funny girl with strange habits. She wouldn't have told me if she knew. I guess Sadoshi must trust you a lot if he confessed to you. I'm a little jealous. Not because he trusts me. I think it's because I'm experiencing the same thing. What? Also had to cover for a sibling once? Those footsteps always followed me. They even came to my bedside and looked down at me. Oh god! I think we're no, I think we're going right into what I think we're all going into. What? I'm sorry, what was she talking about now? I turned to face her and got chills. I turned on the creepy face. <laughs> Though she was smiling, eyes looked ice cold. No fucking shit. I trembled and froze with my eyes open. Have you experienced anything like that? I guess not. Probably. Renna kept laughing so derisively. I tried to figure out what she was saying. Back again? Have you ever thought of leaving Yenimisawa and moving to a bigger city? Ever thought of doing something like that? I don't know how to respond. Renna waited for my answer, urging me to speak with her silence. No? I love it here. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? I knew that. <laughs> it seemed like a good idea to lie to her. Rena had some kind of power that I just can't grasp. She could read people's minds just by seeing the slight change in their expressions. As opposed to seriously reading people's minds by mere touch. So I had to tell her the truth. You'll be okay if that's true. Or Yashira won't get mad at you. Or Yashira-sama? Or bringing that bastard up again? Hating me sound was guardian deity. I couldn't understand why she mentioned the name and my mind stopped for a moment. That's right. Or Yashira. You just calmly repeated the name instead of trying to teach me something. Like, the good time to start running? Now? 
Yeah, I remember. He never allows heathens to discredit Mizawa. Or Shira never allows the villagers to leave, either. Those are the rules. Slowly, I recall the fear of the curse which is supposed to cause the dismemberment murder and the death of the Hojo couple. When I was sent to the institution, I had this fear. I was scared if I went to that faraway boarding school, I'd fall under the curse. But I should be okay. I escaped from the school and returned to hometown, Okinomiya, precisely. But it should be okay according to the kids' rules because, well, I love the place. The hack forces me to live this suffocating life, but I still chose to stay this place. I don't believe I'm breaking the rules. Even though the Sonazaki family has selfishly banished me to a remote place, I came back here anyway. He should even bless me for that. Guess I'm trying to convince myself that the curse cannot apply to me, but... I think I'm still afraid of it. I love this place. I don't think I qualify for the curse. You can even call me a model villager. Love luck! <laughs> just, just a fucking cold, dead stare! Yes, I think so too. But I'm not sure about Satoshi. Why? He wants to leave and run far away, even if only unconsciously. A what? I gave it an audible cry. While I was feeling sad so she had shown up for practice, he still lived in Himizawa. I'd never even considered the thought of him going away. So you say he wants to skip town? Yes, he's not aware of it himself though. He probably didn't notice it until the she stood by his bed. I have no idea what she's talking about! STILL! I continue trying to figure out what she was saying. Everything he's going through is a sign of the curse. You feel like someone's watching you from a distance and it follows you. And then it watches right behind you. After that, you start hearing an extra footstep. It only happens outside first, but you start hearing it even inside your house. Then anyway, Shiri keeps watching you, even while you sleep in the dark. Right behind your side, waiting silently. For you to admit your sin. Sanashi told me he was having nightmares at first. I asked him what kind of dreams he was having. And those dreams he was having, as it turned out, were just like mine. I warned him that the presence would become bigger. He'd hear an extra footstep and feel the presence watching him in his sleep. I told him to come in me if that ever happened. He was the suspicious. He must have been suspicious at first, but just as I predicted, he started to feel Oyashiru say his presence more strongly. He finally realized he couldn't talk to me about it. Rena didn't look like she was joking. She just calmly told me what had been going on. I couldn't even move. I couldn't tell if her words were a joke or the truth. I could only feel stunned. I'm from Inimizawa originally, but I moved to Ibaki Prefecture right before I went to elementary school. When I couldn't adjust to my new environment, Shiro frankly started telling me to return in my head. But I couldn't do anything since I was just a kid. I was forced to live there, though I felt threatened by Oishiro's voice. Then... She paused. It looked like she didn't want to go into the details of what followed. In general, she confused me even more. I was able to come back here in the end. Or is she who forgave me? I haven't felt his presence in more since then. Satoshi is being subjected to the curse even though he's an Inimizawa. Why? There can only be one reason. It's because he wishes to abandon Inimizawa. Or is she who wouldn't allow that. After a series of inner monologues, he confessed. You know he's working part-time, don't you? The teddy bear he's getting for Sonico cost about a hundred thousand yen. And he's trying to get the money by her birthday. 
Have you noticed it yet? Think about it like this. If he had an amount of money, that'd be enough for him to run away somewhere far from here. He unconsciously started to think about that, leaving Sadako behind. But he felt very guilty. As she pointed out, Sadako was a burden to him. He's not stupid. He's aware of that. He just doesn't want to admit it because he's the only one who's supposed to protect his little sister. He's been struggling with himself. He thinks he's working to please Sadako on her birthday. But he self feels he might be deceiving himself because he unconsciously wants to skip town with that money. I don't think he should run away. Even if he did, he'd regret it for the rest of his life. Oishiro knows that. That's why Oishiro is trying to warn him. I help Sadako see. Stops thinking about abandoning Sadako. He's working hard to make it uh, to her birthday. A couple of days after the Madagashi festival, I think. He's pushing himself too hard. He believes he'll end when Sadako's birthday comes. The curse keeps cautioning him. While he tries to figure out whether he should leave or continue protecting her. The torrential rain didn't seem to want to stop. It kept pouring down on the galvanized iron roof, producing a loud noise. Yet in the shack, it was completely silent. What in the hell was Rena talking about? I couldn't grasp even half of what she's saying. The only thing I had figured out is that Satoshi was struggling, confused, and it's in lots of pain. He's suffering from Moyashiro's curse, and Rena experienced that before. The Con Drifting Festival, right around the corner. Moyashiro's curse struck three years in a row. No guarantee it wouldn't strike a fourth time. Sanoshi was subject to Moyashiro's curse, even now. Was he going to skip town? Was he going to be the next victim? Either way, he might disappear forever. Could I do something to prevent it? If I didn't do anything, it would all come down to a hopeless end. But the, wait, end? I started feeling a sense of dread. I didn't buy the crazy story Raina told me. But if something really was happening to Satoshi, which might bring about some kind of an end, I couldn't help feeling scared. It's true, isn't it? My instinct is always correct. I decided to contact Mion despite the danger. Mion got upset at first, but she had to listen to me. Sis, what's going on with Satoshi? He looks really stressed out. I can't even talk to him. What do you mean? You don't know what's going on because you can't talk to him? Sorry. Sis, give me another chance to trade spots again. That's fine, but I'm kind of busy lately attending meetings for the festival. What are you planning to do? Another part-time job? I'm going to your school. So probably in the next chapter, she'll be experiencing Sadako firsthand. Two more pages of this notebook. Let's check them out. Why don't I relay to my encounter with that creepy girl in the rain? Her name is Rena Ryugu. Her real first name is Rena. I have no idea what kind of girl she is. One thing is certain, she has no relation to the Sanazaki family. No relation to the three families as a whole either. The Riku family used to live in Hinimizawa, but then they moved to, Ib to Ibaraki. It was before she went to elementary school. Returned to Hinimizawa some years later. Rena said she came back because of Oyashiro told her to. I don't know what that means. She said it was the curse of Oyashiro. That Oyashiro has stalked her. I think that was probably a hallucination, but Satoshi has been interested in that experience. She said that Satoshi was also experiencing the curse. 
Sanji told her that B was being followed by some unknown existence. He was surprised Lauren Renna had the same experience. What is this curse? Why did Renna and Sanji have a similar experience? I believe that means somebody put them under surveillance. Somebody must be spying on their next victim with the curse. Since Renna and Sandashi both blindly believed in Oishira's curse, they interpreted it as Oishira's presence. If paranoia kicked in, they feel as if they were experiencing paranormal phenomena. Judging from what Renna said, it seems that Sandashi has been put on surveillance since long before the festival. So one question comes to mind. Why were they watching her? I'm assuming that this surveillance was placed on a victim to be of that year. If so, I don't understand why Rena went through it. Why did they watch her even though she was living so far away? If she was considered somebody who abandoned the village, I could understand. But she didn't fall victim in the end. Maybe she was forgiven because she came back to Hinemizawa. I guess she still knows something. I don't. Sadashi looked terrible. When he went home, he had to mediate a fight between Sadako and their aunt and became mentally exhausted. He went to work every day and became physically exhausted. He no longer communicated with his classmates. He either slept on his desk or was gone somewhere during lunch break. He used to be really gentle and it was painful to see him suffering. On top of all that, he was dealing with the curse of Oyashiro. He must have been completely, totally, and absolutely exhausted. The curse was a form of surveillance by those planning to victimize Satoshi that year. Which means that the other victim was in the same situation. Satoshi's aunt had also been watched. Did she not notice any presence? What about the others? Did the victims of the previous incidents also experience it? I need to investigate the facts in order to prove the curse on Satoshi was for just surveillance. Is the surveillance paranoia or really the curse? These are some good answers. Well, I should be aware of that. These are good questions. They seriously need some answers. Hopefully this will provide a little bit more than what the anime allowed.